Now, six years ago, the actor Michael Sheen presented a petition to the Welsh Government calling for children in care not to be housed in bed and breakfast accommodation while they wait for a suitable foster placement or children's home. We're going to speak to Michael live on breakfast in a couple of minutes' time because in a new follow-up documentary, children's charities are now warning that many young people in care in the UK still feel they're not getting the support they need. Here's Paul Heaney. Some of the stories I'm going to tell you are shocking. But more than that, they're shameful. For Michael Sheen, it's become a passion, listening to children who find themselves unable to stay with mum, dad or family. Right, so these are all the photos I've got from the majority of my childhood, from like 3 to 12, 13. While Hope's mum wasn't able to look after her, she has really good memories growing up with her grandparents. I think at that point I really wanted to be in the police <laughs> when I was when I was little. Things changed when she was 13, exploited by older people. Nan and Grandad agreed foster care was best for her own safety. But that placement later broke down. You just feel out of place. I'm just a uh, an excess piece. My mum didn't want me, and now my grandparents can't look after me, and now my foster carers don't want me, and now the state doesn't know what it wants to do with me. What, what's the point, you know? Feeling lost in the system, Hope ran away. Walked up here, and my boyfriend was, at the time, in a tent where that bush is. I remember coming round, going in, and the social services ringing me to tell me that they had to find me somewhere else to live. I was a child in a tent with an adult who was over the age of 18, sleeping rough, where nobody knew where I was. I was technically a child of the state, so it wasn't OK. Do you know what I mean? I, I was at risk. She says the council then placed her in a hostel under the same roof as someone who'd assaulted her. I had clothes stolen from me, I had bus passes stolen from me, uh, the girls used to gang it. Wrexham Council said it always aimed to keep children safe, that its children's services had since been transformed and it would use Hope's comments to improve things further. I'd moved house 12 times by the time I was 15. I've never fully unpacked anywhere. Nobody ever keeps me very long anyway. The story of one girl taken into care at 14, addicted to drugs, was particularly hard to hear. I asked my social worker to find me somewhere back home when I was 16. They offered me a room in this hostel. I knew there was a guy there that sells drugs. I used to, like, score off him before, and I'd just spent nine months getting clean. They placed me in this hostel where he was anyway. And what happened there? I was there less than a week before I was back on drugs. No child should go through it, but children who, who, from the beginning, through no choice of their own, find themselves in circumstances that already makes things harder for them than it does for anyone else. The fact that those are the children who are most likely to end up homeless, most likely to end up with mental health issues, alcohol and drug dependency issues, being sexually abused, you know, that... There's a lot of unfairness in this world, but that is the most unfair. <laughs> Sorry. We asked councils in Wales, using the Freedom of Information Act, what kind of places they were using to house young people. Our investigation has found that even now, children are still being placed in bed and breakfasts and other temporary accommodation here in Wales. That's despite the Welsh Government saying it wanted to stop that six years ago. Most are 16 or 17 years old, but some are even younger. One example was an 11-year-old placed in an Airbnb with support workers because there was nowhere else for them to go. It's not just social workers who respond when a child in care is at risk. This young person has been missing 24 times previously. They are a looked-after child. A 15-year-old boy has gone missing 
from his foster placement. This young person is of particular concern, given that this is the second day on the trot that they've been missing. He's a young lad, probably about this tall. If you think you've seen him, can you give us a ring? A looked-after child can be an easy target for criminals. The, the key word is rejection. They, they feel that they don't fit in anywhere. Suddenly they get this crowd of people around them, whether it's an organised crime group or an exploitation group, and they, they suddenly feel that they're accepted. After hours of searching, it seems the boy has already left the area. They pass information they've gathered to social workers to try to keep him safe. It's becoming increasingly common that um, young people who are within the, the care system are coming to our attention through this kind of um, exploitation. The body representing councils in Wales told us that in the face of growing demand and more complicated cases, they're doing their best, but they need more money. The Welsh Government says children should not be placed in B&Bs. Most children in care, it says, do have a positive experience and it is investing more in foster care and specialist accommodation while trying to help families sooner. Hope is now trying to move on from a difficult time in care. Rock climbing helps her mental health. There's no room for anything else to come into your mind when you're climbing. She's determined to improve the care system for those who come after her. I will fight, and I'm sure a lot of people will, to make sure that this process doesn't happen in the same way it happens to me and to make sure this changes. Paul Heaney, BBC News. Michael joins us on the programme now. Uh, morning, Michael. Thank you very much indeed for talking to us about this this morning. A hugely emotional piece of work that you've, you've done there. We could see how you have been affected by hearing the stories of these children. Um, I'm, I'm curious to know that actually it's, it's six years now, isn't it, since you first raised this. Why has it taken so long and why at this point have you had to come back to this subject? Uh, good morning. Yes. Uh, yeah, it was quite hard listening to that again. Um, yes, yeah, six years ago, handed in the petition to Welsh Government um, to try and stop children, young people being placed in temporary accommodation that's unregulated, uninspected, like B&Bs, hostels, um, budget hotels and that kind of thing. Um, and obviously, over the last few years, things have got <laughs> complicated and very difficult in all kinds of ways. But even before the pandemic began, um, we were still hearing about it happening. Um, uh, and even though the Welsh Government had said that they wanted to make sure that they eliminated it, they would, uh, they would um, strongly advise councils to not uh, place children in, in such places, it's still happening. And, and we made uh, freedom of information requests to all the councils across Wales and found that dozens of children and young people are being still placed in uh, places that are putting them at risk in the last financial year and hundreds more in other forms of unregulated accommodation. So, you know, I mean, the, the film gave you a sense of, of, of the, the, the challenges and the issues. And, and, you know, what really gets to me is the idea that these are children who are already, you know, children are vulnerable anyway, no matter what child it is. But the most vulnerable of the vulnerable are children who are for no you know, reason uh, that's uh, their fault, uh, unable to be looked after by their family, parents, loving, you know, household in that way, and um, and then are put at risk by the very system that is supposed to be looking after them, and then they they're at risk of all kinds of of things like you you heard in the film, and um, it just seems like there's there's a basic unfairness, and 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 that is wrong, and these children should be looked after more than anyone else, not less so. You know, they're, they're too often we hear from them themselves talking about the idea that the system they find themselves in just reflects back to them that they don't matter, that they're not cared about, they're not loved, that they don't have any worth. I mean, when they're moving from place to place, having to, you know, take their belongings in bin bags, as you heard um, the, the, the young woman that, that we refer to as Gemma in the film talking about never fully unpacking anywhere, you know, moved house 12 times by the time she was 15. Um, that sense of, of wanting to belong uh, you know, we all need to feel like we're accepted and we and we belong somewhere and that we matter. And those feelings can then be turned against you and become, you know, negative aspects in life when people start to exploit that that vulnerability. And and it just, 
you know, it really got to me, and, and I'm sure anyone who watches the film will, will feel the same way. How surprised were you, Michael, that these stories were still out there, that these kids were still going through this six years after that first programme? Well, I was both surprised and shocked and sort of not at the same time, because I think, you know, one of the problems is, you know, no one's going to watch this film and think, yeah, that's, you know, they deserve it. I don't think anyone's going to feel that way. Everyone feels for, you know, people, young people in this situation. But the problem is, as a society, we have a collective responsibility to make sure that it doesn't happen. You know, we, we can all watch it and get upset about it and, and hear the stories and, and think that it's up to someone else to do something about it. But, you know, that we need to put pressure on to make sure that these children don't disappear, that they don't just fall off the radar and, and that we sort of, you know, accept it or ignore it or, you know, avoid thinking about it. It's wrong that, that children can effectively disappear in this way and become subject to some of the worst, you know, imaginable things that can happen to a child. Michael, do you feel like maybe by what you've been doing, the work you've been doing, being able to shine a light on the situation, you might be able to make a change here. And what might that change be? Well, I also, I mean, I, you know, I'm a very small part of it, but, you know, I know, as I say in the film at the beginning, I found that, you know, at a certain point in my life, I had a voice and uh, um, that people, you know, rightly or wrongly, uh, uh, have to listen to. Um, a lot of the young people and children that we're talking about don't have that voice. Organisations like Voices from Care Cymru are, are trying to advocate for children, but they're too easily not heard from. And it's their voices that have to, and their experiences that have to be at the heart of how this system works, rather than them feeling like objects and, and, and this in this cold system. You know, they need to feel like they, they, they matter and their voices are heard. There are positive things, you know, being done in Wales. There's a, a basic income pilot uh, about to start where 18-year-old uh, care leavers will be able to get £1,600 a month as a kind of basic income to help them transition into adulthood. Um, but we need to make sure that earlier on, you know, that there's more support for families and children so they don't get into crisis in the first place, and that once they are uh, going through the system, that it's a system that meets their needs um, and that their voices are heard from and that there's more support for them all along the way. And that the, the, the positive aspects, you know, Hope and Niall, who are in the film, they both talk about a time when there was positive potential and possibility in their life. And hearing them talk about how that was closed down and not nurtured and, and developed is, 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 is one of the most heartbreaking aspects of the film. It certainly is. Michael Sheen, thank you so much for, for joining us on Breakfast this morning and telling us about, uh, about the documentary. And uh, if you want to see it in full, uh, you can watch it. It's uh, Michael Sheen lifting the lid on the care system. It's on the BBC iPlayer now, or it's on BBC One Wales on television tonight at 9 o'clock, isn't it? Yeah.